Steve. How are you doing? Yeah, all right, how are you? Yeah, we've just spoke for 20 minutes. Who's shaking hands for? Your first uh, season managing in the Premier League. How's it been? Good, yeah. I mean, it's relentless. It's, uh, it's demanding. It's completely different to, to the Championship. And I often said in the Championship, the best thing about it was trying to get to the league above it, which, yeah. which obviously we, we managed to do la last season. And... Um, more or less everything changes from sitting with you to uh, the amount of media attention to the, the demands of um, the game. Obviously, you know, the, the level of football and the players you come up against week in, week out is, is incredible. Um, but it's just where everybody wants to, to, to be and, and, and we're no, no different. A lot of people have made um, quite a big deal out of the amount of players mm. Forrest have signed. But... On a serious note, how hard is it to get to know 20-odd players yeah. and fit them all into a team and win football yeah. matches? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've, we've said quite openly, we don't, like, um, I don't like to um, have any elephants in the room or whether it's with, with media, you guys, or whether it's with ourselves, you know, we want to face up to everything, good, bad or, 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 or indifferent. And uh, I, it, it's... it's it's been my most difficult, and is my most difficult coaching challenge in over 20 years of, of coaching. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not enjoyable, and that yeah, doesn't yeah. mean that um, you know we're not motivated. I mean, I have to say, it's a completely unique situation. It can't be compared to anything that's been done before. I find that a massive motivation, Love you know, that. because I think like we can, we're trying to do something that's not been done before, and uh, and trying to write our own little story with it. So your question is, how difficult has it been been for me? Or challenging, it's like don't forget how difficult it might be for the players. Yeah. A player will join, have joined a club, maybe from a, a different league, a different country, as expecting to go into a dressing room that's been together, or 80, 90 percent of it have been yeah. together. But actually, the people sitting opposite them, left and right, have only just joined exactly. themselves. You've been coaching since really young age. Mm. Why did you get into it so young? Because I was a crap footballer, probably, is <laughs> the real answer. No, I did. I played professionally well, for, for, even for a couple of years. Yeah. And, and I didn't, looking back now, you think that you have your dreams and whatever, but looking back now, it, I was never, you know, going to get much further than, than, than what I did, which you could say is a little bit further than most. But uh, I was lucky that I was at a club, Wrexham, who, who's quite become well-known again for, yeah, yeah. for different reasons. Big time now. Uh, uh, yeah, and Hollywood. Home, home is still, still Wrexham for me, but yeah. I was lucky at that time that... Um, OK, I didn't carry on being a player, but they offered me a, a full-time coaching job, which was, when I look back now, I was so lucky. I was only 20 years of age. And I've worked as a full-time coach professionally at professional level since, since then. So, um, but I did fall in love with coaching pretty much straight, straight away. You know, I was still playing part-time football, but I was more looking forward to my next coaching session than my next sort of playing training session. And, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And stop playing then. Not, not why, why? What, was the, I what, just you, loved, what did you love about it so much? Just the, the, the essence of, of coaching and trying to, um, it was young players then, and, and just trying to help them and to see the growth in them and trying to get, you know, some, some development and good returns mm. from them. And uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer that, that the coaching is a uh, profession. It's yeah. a craft, it's an art. And, and, and like anything in life, you have to do it all for the course of time. Yeah. That's not to say that's the only way of becoming a coach. There's, you know, you see some ex-players that just go into it and hit the ground running. But for me, my, my journey to being, you know, to maybe a decent level of coach has been a, a continuation of over 20 years, thousands of games, thousands yeah. of, of sessions. Did you never fancy going down your dad's route because your dad, Keith, was a, a Premier League mm. ref? No, because if you had a Monday morning like me in school, you know, <laughs> after... <laughs> After a Sky game and a few sort of, I wouldn't say dodgy decisions, but maybe decisions that people didn't agree with. And the stick I used to get, I thought, nah, <laughs> the I, I ain't doing that. You know, so, um, no, nah, like, listen, yeah, we're really proud of Dad now. Yeah. We, even, we were always proud of him. When you look back now and see that he was part of it and how well he did as a referee, then, you know, it's nice, nice to think about it. Are you a bit more lenient now with refereeing decisions because of your dad, or do you still proper get stuck into him? Um... No, is the answer. <laughs> no, and neither's my dad, to be honest. Um, no, I think that. Um, uh, listen, I do. I do respect. Yeah. Yeah, referees, and you know, and I have been on the other side and at home and and things like that, and um, so you know, I do see it. It's not to say that I don't stand my ground, and of course. you know, and uh, but I do like to think that 
I have a de decent relationship with, with, with referees. You've got um, a bit of a hidden talent. You, you're double decent on the old guitar, aren't you? I've seen you uh, no, that's... strumming out a bit of Oasis, Wonderwall. Yeah. I wouldn't say double decent, and I wouldn't say a hidden talent. I would say uh, something that I can do. Um, it's usually just to myself, and no one else can listen. I mean, Noel's in the studio. Uh, uh, Noel's in the studio. He's well, watching I, his I, nose, I don't so. think he'll be ringing me for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I managed to. I was lucky enough to meet Noel Gallagher once, actually, at the uh, Sports Personality of the Year, and that was a, a, a real honour. I don't, he won't remember, but but I do. Um, but no, like, um, yeah, I like my music, but um, you won't see me playing the guitar too often. Certainly not in public. Fair enough. Steve, thank you so Top much. Man. Cheers, mate. See you, mate. Thank you.